Hello, everyone. Today we'll be covering how to use the CBCT feature in Vision. In our tutorial, we'll be adding a new patient with all required information and identify where the option to upload the CBCT zipped files is found. Now, this step is optional and can be skipped when a case does not need the additional information, but it can be beneficial to use this option to see patient-specific imaging of the true geometry of the roots for treatment planning in more complex cases. So we'll begin by creating a brand new patient in our portal. We'll go ahead and enter pertinent information uh, in the required fields that are designated with a red asterisk. Patient ID is automatically generated, and then we'll select the uh, patient's birth date or the date that we entered the case into the system. The gender, patient's email, and phone number are not required to be filled, so we can move to the next step. Case ID, this allows you to go ahead and enter additional uh, identification numbers or letters that you may use in your uh, practice. And you can enter any uh, pertinent notes that you would like to have in the uh, while others work on the case as well, or any doctor required information. Next, we'll enter our uh, option to the upload the patient's jaw scan. So we'll simply select the cell by clicking into it and upload our upper and lower jaws. We'll browse, select the case. And in the meantime, we'll do the same thing for the lower while the upper is loading. While those are loading, I can continue to select any patient infer, uh, I'm sorry, patient photos, intraoral photos, x-rays, images like panoramics, and at the very bottom, we find the CBCT option. So we'll click into the cell, browse for our zipped CBCT file, and upload it. While that one is uploading, I'll double check and make sure my STLs have uh, been uploaded. And when we see the image of the CBCT, that's when we know that all images and data have been uh, uploaded. Now, remember, sometimes this may take a little bit. There are anywhere from 100 to 300 images uh, in a CBCT. And also, this is purely optional. Like I mentioned earlier, you do not have to upload a CBCT to go ahead and upload or work on a case. We'll click on Create. Patient was successfully created. And we can continue to either add the assignees that are going to be working on the case in different stages if we want to. Or we can simply just click on open case. When we click on open case, the first scene that we'll see is the orientation scene where we'll be placing the three landmarks on our upper and three landmarks on our lower. So here's the orientation scene. We'll place uh, three landmarks, one on the occlusal surface of a molar, the next one on the incisal edge of a central, and the third again on uh, occlusal surface of our molar. It automatically switches to the lower where we'll do the same thing, occlusal surface of a molar, incisal edge of a central, and occlusal surface of the molar on the other side. That gives us our orientation and occlusal plane. If you decide that you made a mistake on one of the landmarks or want to redo it over, you can use this icon called the three point orientation um, and it'll take you back to the beginning of placing three landmarks on the upper and then on the lower. Now this is also a new feature in our, our latest update. So this is, uh, if you'd like to try, you know, just let us know.
We'll move to the next step. This is our model correction or sculpting scene where we'll be able to use any of the tools to make adjustments to the surface of the tissue or the gum surface. Now we do have a separate tutorial in our YouTube channel where we go over each individual tool and how to use it. So please take a look at those. We'll move to the next step since I won't be making any corrections. And this is our uh, segmentation scene. So we can uh, select our upper or lower arch and begin our segmentation. So if we want to go ahead and make uh, a selected tooth so it's not charted into the system, we can go ahead and select the tooth and choose the option to use missing tooth. So I'm going to redo the lower for you since the upper is already done. We'll just go into the lower, select a tooth on the lower, and then click on reset to reset the entire arch so you can see how that's done. I'm going to uh, select on the chart my tooth 17, and I'm going to select missing tooth because I do not want tooth number 17 to be charted. It'll be grayed out or deselected. And then I can continue to move forward by placing my distal and major landmarks across the arch of the rest of the teeth. If I need to zoom in for a better look, I can use this green button or circle. And then it gives me a zoomed in view. And I can continue to place my major distal landmarks. Again, I don't want tooth number 32 to be uh, charted, so I'm going to select the missing tooth option. So it is grayed out. And then we can continue to move forward to the next step. And in the next step, so it's going to take into account the landmarks and it's going to segment the crown from the tissue. And then we'll be able to also make any corrections uh, to the segmentation if needed. You can see the timeline is always letting us know what's happening. <clears throat> so we're saving the case. It opens up into the area where we'll be able to correct our segmentation if needed. So we'll just evaluate our upper buckle and lower buckle areas, and the facial, and I can see already I have one correction there and one on the buckle side. So in order to make the correction, we simply choose either the tooth on the chart of the arch that we want to correct, and it'll select. And I can go ahead and grab my bullet now remember sometimes there's flash that you can't see but you kind of have to rotate in order to make sure that you're able to grab the bullet exactly where you need to we have a correction on our molar so i can choose the molar on the chart or simply click on the bullet on the tooth that i want to correct and i can grab it and make my corrections and let's evaluate the lingual side just to make sure that everything's been segmented correctly. I have one little area here. Okay. Make sure our lingual of our upper is good. And okay, everything looks good on both arches, so we'll continue to click next. Now it's moving into the high gingiva segmentation, which is where the software evaluates the interproximal areas and discards of any artifacts or uh, unidentified marks that are not part of the tooth. 
and it's also where we'll be able to designate any areas that may be considered uh, uh, black triangles due to the gum recession. So I'm going to zoom in. And as we evaluate areas, let's say that there's an area that I think is a black triangle that uh, due to the gum recession. Um, and all we have to do is click in the inner dental area, whether it's on the upper or lower, and then just move the bullet to designate a black triangle or a high gingiva. As you can see, the software identifies everything pretty well. So we'll just move to the next step. So now we're going into uh, the generation or the segmentation of the baseline. The baseline automatically includes two to three gum millimeters of gum tissue that can be adjusted by simply adjusting the bullets or adding more bullets if we want to include additional tissue. Once we've made adjustments, we can move to the next step. If there's an area with trimming line errors, and what that means is that there's areas where there may be missing mesh, and the software cannot trim, we can, it'll, it'll show you that error and then we can make adjustments by adding bullets so that red designated area is corrected. Let's see if the lower has any. Nope, no red marks. Once that correction has been made, we can try to move forward again. And if it needs correction, it'll let us know again. There's the little area there. So now we've made our corrections. So now we can see the height of the base. We can see we have two uh, horseshoe bases and they are sealed. We have the option to increase the height of both jaws by clicking on the box for both jaws and then using the slider to increase the height of the base of both of the jaws. If we want to just do an individual jaw, just make sure to deselect the box and adjust that one height uh, designated for the upper or the lower jaw. And once we've completed that, we can move to the next step. So here we're, the, the software is actually identifying the root from the bone and soft tissue that will produce the real root geometry. And it merges it with the segmented crown. So all the components that we've been doing up to this point are working together to generate the real root. So I'm gonna deactivate the gum tissue by selecting the icon up at the top. So the software generated the real roots of every single tooth. We can choose to work with the real root or simply identify the parametrical roots by selecting the arch from the drop down menu and clicking parametrical root and you can see that the parametrical roots will begin to show up and because these are simulation of a root they're not going to be within the correct axis or angle of the real root so they may collide with each other 
and that's what why you see the red triangle. Now we can adjust these roots because the parametrical root allows us to have a gizmo and make the corrections to the axis. And as you can see, as we correct it, the collision designation will be removed on the chart because it's been corrected. So let's switch back to the real roots by going back to the menu. Now, sometimes if the data that was presented in the CBCT uh, is of low quality and the software cannot identify the root from the bone, then it'll automatically provide a parametrical root for that specific tooth. If there is a real root or an anomaly like you see on the molar, we do have the option to change that one tooth from a real root to a parametric root. We will select that one specific tooth in the arch. You can choose to select it from the chart or just click on the tooth itself. Then you will right click on the selected tooth to get the menu to use the parametric root and it'll automatically change from real to parametric root if you do not want to see that anomaly. And again, the difference between parametric and real root is that you will be able to change the angulation or axis of a parametric root, but not to the real root again because that is the real geometry that is being produced from the CBCT. Okay, we hope that this tutorial has been helpful uh, and please don't hesitate to reach out to us if you would like a demonstration of the full uh, spectrum of the software. Thank you so much for watching and please follow our YouTube channel for additional educational videos.